So we have this rotating tractor, very beautiful. Last time I wanted to implement some camera movement and I think for that we need to clean up the code a little bit. So let's do exactly that. So first we have this basic initialization code that uh, creates the window, set up the GPU device and some SDL logging. Maybe it's a good idea to move this into some basic init function. Let's do exactly that. Init procedure, move it here. Let's just add the init call here. Now we have a bunch of errors that we cannot access our GPU and our window here. And this raises a question, how do we want to access our program state? Well, we could pass this as an argument or we could have a global state for our program and pass that or just have one global variable with uh, all the global state. But since this is a still a hello world kind of program, um, I will just move those into a package space as simple global variables. So I will say GPU is pointer to SDL GPU device, right? So now this should be an assignment to our global variable like this, right? Now this okay is not non-existent because that was a local variable that was defined here, right? And uh, we will we want another local variable like this. This window also needs to be accessed in the multiple places. So maybe it's a good idea to also make that global window. SDL window. All right, so far so good. Still compiles. So that would be our initialization function. Let's take a look. The next part will be our pipeline creation, I think. So we have this vertex and fragment shader loading and they are actually related to the pipeline creation and not to our specific mesh. So maybe we should move it somewhere here where we create the pipeline. So now we can take all of this and cut and paste into some function called setup pipeline. Now we can see that our vertex data uh, that was actually defined in our main function also should be pulled to the global scope, which makes sense because it's a type definition after all. Then this depth texture format is another one that deserves to live in the global scope, I think. Maybe move it here as well. Let's take a look. Uh, the pipeline will be a yet another global variable because we have just one pipeline. So SDL GPU graphics pipeline. In a real render, I think the pipeline would be actually a property of a material or something, but since we don't have materials, we have just a single pipeline with uh, two shaders, we can just have it as a global variable. Don't forget to change this to a, an assignment to a global variable, otherwise the pipeline will not be initialized. And don't forget to call the pipeline initialization. Still works. Now let's take a look further. So this wind size and the depth texture initialization, it's actually part of the initialization, I would say, because our window is not resizable. So it makes sense to actually initialize it somewhere here and maybe make wind size also a global value like this. K okay, is again another local variable and the depth texture is another global variable because we use it for drawing. So that would be simply a depth texture, SDL, GPU texture, right? Something like this. And do not forget to assign to it here, right? Good, still works. So now we have initialization. So this white color constant can also go somewhere together with our constants. And by the way, this could be just a normal constant, not a, a variable. Now we have all this code that loads the texture and the mesh data and also uploads it to the GPU. All this is basically loads our model somewhere up to here, right? So we can maybe cut that and put into a function named something like load model, right? That would say load model, a procedure, put the code here. Let's take a look. So we probably don't want to hard code this once. So we need to have a mesh file as a string and texture file as a string. Put this here, 
put this here. Now, what is interesting here is that a STBI load function accepts a C string, so that's an null terminated string, while Odin strings are actually data plus len, right? And it's not guaranteed to be null terminated. So what we need to do to actually convert to a C string is use a function from the strings package. So let's do that, strings. And yeah, maybe we can just overshadow the, the argument like this. So we would say strings clone to C string that takes a normal string and then an allocator. So we actually want this to be a temporary allocation. So we should talk about temporary allocation in a minute. How to use temporary allocation? We say just context temp allocator. So this is a special allocator for temporary stuff in Odin. Very, very handy. Let's first make it compile. So again, okay is yet another local variable. And then we have this, right? So we have a vertex buffer, index buffer, number of indices and the texture. All of these are properties of a model. So maybe it makes sense to introduce a model structure that would contain all these fields, right? So let's do that. Let's say model struct and that would contain a vertex buffer, SDL GPU buffer, then the index buffer, which is another GPU buffer, then the num indices, which would be U32, we can prepare it as U32 for SDL, and then the texture that we want to use for this mesh, so that would be a pointer to SDL GPU texture, like this, and we can make our load model method return that. So we just say return vertex buff is vertex buff, index buff, index buff, num indices, of course, num indices and texture is texture. That needs to be, of course, converted to U32. Now we can just load our model like this, model equals load model. So we have here our police structure, right, as a mesh, and as a texture, we have color map. By the way, if you want to do OBS loading properly, the OBS file has this material libraries, which uh, is a file that describes material and then this use MTL, which describes which material to use. But since we haven't implemented that, we just use the texture directly. We have to specify this. Now here we can just say model all these things, right? And we can remove the cast. That should still work. Remember I talked about this temp allocator here. So this temporary allocator is actually for like well, temporary allocations, right? And temporary means that they are short-lived and normally they would live for like one frame in your game. That means that we need to free the memory for it when our frame happens. So basically what we need to do here in our main loop, like in the very beginning, we should say free all and then context temp allocator, right? That means that whatever we allocate using the temp allocator during the frame will be cleaned and the temp allocator will be completely free. If you don't do this, of course, it will grow up indefinitely and you will run out of memory. So this is important. All right, that still works. So, so far so good. Now the sampler actually doesn't really depend on the model. It's just a sampling configuration. Normally that would be again a property of material, but maybe you would want to cache the samplers by their parameters here. Uh, but since we are not doing that, we can maybe just move this create sampler into part of our pipeline here and make it another global variable, right? So sampler SDL GPU sampler. Alrighty, yeah. this looks a little bit cleaner. Uh, we could of course continue refactoring this. We could maybe separate the update and uh, render functions and just generally structure the code better. But I feel like it's good enough for now so we can proceed with uh, our camera movement and not waste a lot of time on uh, further refactoring because after all, it's just a hello world. 
maybe we should move this rotation to the update game state because that's what it is right so that still works good and i think i will upload this part already to youtube because it was already 10 minutes and we made some breathing space for further development and uh, i will do this next day so stay tuned for more